let's continue talking about preferences. So far, we've talked about what we'll call standard or well-behaved preferences, and that is to say marginal utilities are both positive, which is why indifference curves, as, as we've already pointed out, remain downward sloping, and we have diminishing marginal rate of substitution. So for example, that might mean that as you're switching between how many apples and how many oranges you consume in a given week, perhaps as you're buying the third apple, you're willing to give up two oranges. As you're getting your fourth apple, you're willing to give up just one orange. And then for the next apple, just half an orange and again. And so diminishing MRS leads us to this type of slope for indifference curves where they're about towards the origin. That, in conjunction with downward sloping indifference curves, gives us these um, predictable, nice um, shapes to work with. However, it's worth spending a little bit of time to see what does it look like when one or more of these conditions fail. What would it look like, for example, if someone didn't like apples at all, was simply not um, affected in any way by them? Then, to figure out what indifference curves look like, it's useful to start from, again, from some point in the space. Suppose we're starting with six of each. Which way can we move while maintaining the same level of utility? Well, if we don't care about apples, that means that we can add apples or subtract apples, and we'll still have the same indifference, um, we'll still be on the same indifference curve. We can't move up or down because we do like oranges, and that will make us either happier or less so. Okay, so in difference curves, if we have zero marginal utility from the good on the horizontal axis, will be horizontal themselves. Okay, remember MRS is a measure of how much value we place on the good on the horizontal axis relative to the good on the vertical axis. What if instead we did like both apples and oranges, but no more than twice a day? So in a given week, once we've had 14 of either, that's, that's enough for us. Well then, everywhere below and to the left of those cutoffs, indifference curves can be expected to behave the same way because marginal utilities are still positive. However, as we get close to these cutoffs, in this case, if we're having more than 14 apples a week, we said that we don't get any further benefits from them. That means that the indifference curve will become flat. We can continue to add apples without subtracting oranges and still the person will have the same utility value. So whenever the indifference curve is perfectly flat, that means that the consumer doesn't place any value on the good on the horizontal axis. Whenever the indifference curve is perfectly vertical, that means that the consumer only values the good on the horizontal axis and places zero value on the good on the vertical axis. What if instead we imagine that as we reach the point where we're not interested in apples anymore, suppose that we were forced to continue to eat them. In that case, once we reach point of marginal utility zero for apples, we can expect that as we continue to have more, we will have negative marginal utility of apples. In that case, in order to consume more and not have lower utility, we will need to be compensated with more of something that we still like. And so that means upward sloping and difference curves. Same here, if once we weren't interested in oranges anymore, we had to keep eating more, the way to compensate us for it would be to give us more of also of apples, which we're here still interested in. Okay, so when indifference curves are upward sloping, that means that either 
one or the other of the goods has negative marginal utility. In this example, to the right of this point, we have negative marginal utility of apples, and above this level, we have negative marginal utility of oranges. Let's now look at a different example. Suppose that we're looking at preferences over pens and pencils. Well, for someone who doesn't have a preference between them, who thinks that they're equally good at writing, they don't go back and erase anything, so it's not a problem to write with pens. For that person, they're always willing to trade a pencil in exchange for a pen. Or if pencils, let's say, last less, you can write less with them, there will nonetheless be some other ratio at which they're always willing to trade one for the other. Suppose that a pen lasts twice as long as a pencil, and they'll be willing to trade two pencils for one pen, or four pencils for two pens. So in that case, difference curves will be will have a constant slope indicating utility increases this way, indicating that the marginal rate of substitution is constant. This would be perfect substitutes. Consider these preferences, where we have someone who likes to use pens to take notes in notebooks, and that's the only time they use either pens or notebooks. Furthermore, one pen is only going to last about half a notebook, so for every notebook they have to use two pens. What will the difference curves look like in that case? Well, let's start from a point where they have two pens in one notebook, and ask ourselves which direction can we go while increasing, while not increasing or decreasing utility. Well, if we're keeping the number of notebooks at one, then even though we're adding pens, utility of the consumer won't go up, since we said that that's the only context in which they use pens. Similarly, if we hold the number of pens fixed at two, they won't have any use for extra notebooks, because by the time they've used the to, um, by the time they've used their two pens, they have nothing else to write with. Okay? Now, they can be better off, and that's if they have four pens and two notebooks. That's another indifference curve where utility is higher, or six and three. Okay, so these are all different um, indifference curves of increasing utility. But in each case, the slope it is either zero, if the marginal utility of pens is zero, and that's because on these segments, the extra pens are of no use, or marginal utility of notebooks is zero on these segments, meaning that MRS is infinite. Remember that MRS is the ratio of marginal utilities. Okay. Uh, this case is called perfect complements. We can even imagine a case where MRS is increasing as we move in this direction. Let me give you an example. Suppose that we're graphing the number of PC products in your household versus the number of Mac products. So that might include computers, but also tablets, phones, and so on. We don't have to take a stance over which is better. However, what we should think about is whether it's better to have all of one type or a combination of. The idea would be that if you have, suppose that they're equally good, so that having, let's say, um, six PC products is just as good as having six Mac products. However, if you have um, a mix of the two, let's say three of each, it's possible that that would actually make your life harder because now you need to know two separate systems. Okay, and so if your 
um, family member has a different type of operating system than you, then might be harder to debug things, might be harder to transfer files across, and so on. So in a case like that, even though you didn't have a preference per se between the two brands, it might still be the case that combinations are worse than extremes. Then, indifference curves would have to be both away from the origin so that averages would be on lower indifference curves. Okay? So this would be a case of increasing marginal rate of substitution. Okay? So the value of the extra PC product increases as you have more of them in your home and fewer Mac products and the other way around. Consider the following example. Suppose a group of friends is debating the value of various pizza toppings and two of the more contested ones are anchovies and mushrooms. Some people might like both and in particular might have diminishing MRS the same way we've discussed here so that the more anchovies they have and the fewer mushrooms, the less value they place on one extra anchovy and the other way around. Other people might feel indifferent towards some of the goods. So suppose that someone had no opinions about mushrooms. They were entirely happy both with and without them. In that case, that would mean that the marginal utility of mushrooms would be zero, right? And instead, they only cared about anchovies. What would indifference curves look like then? Well, starting from some random point, we would have to ask which direction can we go and not increase or decrease utility. If they only like anchovies, that means that we can't move in either direction horizontally without affecting utility. However, we can move up. We can add mushrooms without making them better off or subtract mushrooms. If we have more anchovies, then again, doesn't matter how many mushrooms we have, we'll be equally happy, and so on. So if MU2 is zero, we would have these types of vertical indifference curves, and we would say that that good with zero marginal utility is a neutral. Another one of the friends might actively dislike anchovies, let's say. So they like mushrooms. MU2 is positive, but MU1 is negative. If that's the case, if someone derives negative marginal utility at any level from a good, we would actually say that's a bad for them. Um, What will indifference curves look like then? Well, imagine starting from some random point where you have, let's say, three mushrooms and three anchovies on the pizza. If we're trying to keep you equally happy and we're adding mushrooms, which you like, we will have to also add anchovies, which you dislike. And in reverse, if we offer to take away some of your anchovies, you'll be better off the only way to keep you at the same utility level is to also take away some mushrooms, okay? And so in this case, indifference curves would be upward sloping. In particular, you want to be careful to mark the direction of utility increase. Here, it's going to be away from anchovies. Okay, so upward sloping indifference curves with utility increasing going up and to the left means that you have negative marginal utility of the good on the horizontal axis and positive on the of, um, marginal utility of the good on the vertical axis. If instead the arrow were to point the other way, that would indicate the consumer with negative marginal utility of mushrooms. Okay? Note that if they were both negative, then we would have to get back to downward sloping indifference curves. But we don't need to worry about that case. 